Now, I'm joined by mother of three and comedian Emma Doran. Emma learned uh, that she was uh, first pregnant when she was doing her leaving cert. And while her friends were planning holidays, she was worrying about telling her mother about being pregnant. <laughs> She since turned it into fun. It's the way to deal with it if you can. Since then, Emma has become an internet sensation. Before we talk to her, uh, let's take a quick look at one of her videos. Okay, Ella. You're starting secondary school. It's a big step. You're nervous. I've got some tips, though, okay? I'm going to help you out. Tip one, learn how to text without looking at your phone. So texting like this, practice now. Looking ahead, paying attention to the teacher, texting your friends, okay? That's good. That needs a little bit of work. That's good. Okay. Tip number two, you don't need any books, none of that. Tip X, compass, seat at the back of the class. That's all you need. You'll be fine. Okay. okay. Tip number three, this is important. Drop to pass Irish and pass maths straight away. Don't waste any time, just do it, okay? What about English? <laughs> like, don't give up straight away. Okay. Just maths and Irish. Okay. Tip number four, Whatever the cool people are doing, just do that. Don't ask questions. Don't think about it. Just do it. Do what they do. <laughs> There's a kind of serendipity showing that on Today of All Days, Junior Search Results Day. Oh yeah, yeah. Good morning, Emma. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, are you sick of the mum of three who got pregnant at 18 is now comedian and internet sensation introduction yet? No, not yet. <laughs> but it's, I mean, I'm being introduced, so that's nice. <laughs> All right, okay, so that's a start. You'll take that's a that. That's start, yeah, I'll take that, yeah. I was just wondering, because it, it, there, there's, kind of there's a bunch of pigeonholes you get put into straight away there with that. Yeah. Well, I suppose people like to know what you're about, and that, I think it's a good starter. There's more, hopefully, to me than that, but it's a good little introduction. It's a good starter. So yeah. what does it actually tell us about you then? Mm, well, I think because I was quite young when I had my daughter, you know, but... Um, that was her in the video, by the way. That was her in the video. But I always say to people, they're kind of like, oh, what age are you? And I was young, but I was well set up. Um, it was just after my confirmation that I had her. So just to clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Mary Joseph, I can't believe you said that. If anyone's trying to do the, the math. The BAI will take us off. Oh, stop. No. But she gives away my age automatically, you know what I mean? So I think when you go through something like that so young, you kind of develop a thick skin. And comedy is not easy, but, you know... I think it prepared me for it. Yeah, they, I, 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 we were just talking before we came on. Uh, I, look, it happens to, you know, thousands of families. And yeah. people get on with it and have grand lives and, you know, they're not ruined or scarred and the children grow up to be very happy and loved and that's the most important thing. But you were obviously, uh, um, th there was obviously a kind of a, a very supportive atmosphere at home because it was like, okay, we have this, what are we going to do about it? Well, you're going to go and have the child, you're going to become a mum, but you're also going to go to school and get qualified and get an education. So it, it oh, didn't yeah. mean that you lost your childhood and your life all at the same time. Yeah, I think I probably just became an adult overnight, but my parents were like, oh, you know, you'll do your leave insert and you'll go to college. And so they were there to support me. So if I hadn't had that, I don't mm. know, like, that would have been well, we all want difficult. our kids to grow up fast. Maybe not quite <laughs> that way. <laughs> no, not overnight. So, right, OK, um, you do that. You have a career, you get a degree, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, where does this thing about comedy come from? Or was, was that always in the background? Did you want to do that? Is there a performing gene in the family? Um, no, there's no performers. My dad's a bit of a diva, but no, <laughs> there's no actual performers. But I, when I went to college, I always kind of wanted to do perform, but I thought, oh, I'm... A mother now, responsibilities, I have to get a, a solid job. So I worked, I did lots of different jobs and I worked in admin a good bit. And that was great because I think with admin, like you don't know what your job is and nobody else does. So I just used to research on the internet all the time about open mics and that kind of thing. And but you don't just wake up one day and say, oh, I want to be a comedian, do you? No, I think it's... it's Were you always, always a smart aleck or the funny one in the gang? or? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, or right, teachers okay. either loved me or hated me, you know, a little bit chatty, that kind of thing. And all my family, if everyone's in a good mood and happy, we're all slagging each other. So, it's, you know, it's that kind of thing. But um, so I started doing little bits and um, I started doing videos online. And then um, a producer saw them and he asked me to audition for a show. And I was really excited about it. But I had to, I went and wore all black and I kind of hunched my back and because I was seven months pregnant at the time. So he was kind of looking at me going, what's... Um, There's a pattern yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. So the times totally conflicted. But he said to me, he's like, you should go and try stand-up. 
So I think when he said it to me, when somebody said it to me, I was like, oh, it kind of gave me really? a little oh, push that I needed. You, you've called, I know you're, uh, you're, you're going to feature in this year's uh, Dublin Fringe Festival. You've got a yes. show and it's called Liga Lube and a Bottle of Gin. With, without getting me into trouble, can yes. you explain where the title of that comes from? So concentrate on the Liga and the Bottle of Gin yes. bit, right? Leave the middle bit out. Yeah, OK, because everybody understands that, I think, don't they? I don't want to know. So Liga is just in reference to my children. So, but I don't want to bang on about them because I think nobody's interested in other people's kids. So it's just to let people but know. But it is one of the universals. Yeah, anybody who has kids yeah. gets it instantly. If you don't have kids, well then, yeah. you know, you're so, coming, but I'm not, what are they on But about? you don't really want to hear about other people's kids. So I'll make reference to them, but I won't go on about it. It's just to let people know, oh, why is she so tired and cynical? Oh, she has three kids, Grant. So that's just okay. to give them a heads up. And then the next part is loop, um, that part. And then... <laughs> go and see the show. You can explain it there, right? Yes. And then gin is basically if people come to the gig and they bring like a sneaky nag and, and they don't finish it, they can just leave it with me. It's I'm called gonna, a muddler, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to have a box on stage. You know, like the box in school when you gave stuff for Christmas. Mm. So if people want to leave a bottle as they go out, you know, they, if they think like, oh, that was so good, I don't feel like paid I gave and, her paid enough. half empty bottles of yeah. gin. Okay. Yeah, so that's um, the plan. The, the, it, it is interesting, like a, a lot of comedians, male and female, yeah. have to serve their dues and do the circuit and all this. And it is a long, hard slag, yeah. slog. And, and most performers and entertainers will take their hat off to comedians because there is no tougher or lonelier place to be when it's not working for you. But the social media and the internet and all the rest of it now has provided you with a, with a, you know, a modern way into it. And I mean, it is quite extraordinary the way, the way these things have gone viral and taken off for you. Yeah, so I mean, I was doing, I've been doing stand-up for three years. Mm. So there's lots of gigs to you know, 12 Spanish students kind of on a Tuesday night. So I just started doing... Okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty rough. All so, sharing one one glass of Coke. Yeah, one translator, straws, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've done all those. I'm still doing them. Um, but so I started doing the videos just with my phone, like in my kitchen, really. Um, and some of them kind of took off. But so I, I think it's just, it's another way of letting people know who you are. So maybe if they see your name on a billing, they might come and see it, but... Um, I suppose I just would see them as a sideline. It would just be about the, the gigs, really, for me. That would so be... it's all, it is all about life. Yeah. Mind you, there's a lot of money on, uh, on YouTube if you can monetize it, as they call it these <laughs> days. Well, it's, you, you, what you want to do is you want to get the name out there. The name is Emma Doran. The show is called Liga Lube and a Bottle of Gin, and it is going to run in this year's Dublin Fringe Festival. Go on, see her. Thanks so much. Nice to meet you. Hopefully you'll come back again. Yeah, hopefully. Thanks for having there you me. Go, right. Still to come, uh, we're getting a huge response on gender neutral toilets. wonder what Emma thinks about that. <laughs> and just, <laughs> just how many cups of tea the Irish actually drink? We'll be going through some of those comments very shortly. Uh, let's take the news now. Last look at the headlines. Here's Caroline.